Hello, Zero K fans! This is Shredder333 with another exhibition match stream. This is gonna be another set of requests. First off, it's going to be Crazy135 versus DDeebs, as DDeebs asked for this one for basically, I guess, figuring out how to better play the game. And it's on Adamantine Mountain. My first recommendation would be not to play Adamantine Mountain. Well, not really, actually, it's, it's an okay map. But, it is a little bit of a weird one to get used to, honestly. It's just, particularly because of the fact that your obvious expansion points are pretty low value. Like the good expansion points are far away, so you have to be comfortable setting up defenses far away from your main base, like not just crawling out. You have to actually be able to comfortably jump away from your main base into other bases. So for a new player, this is a bit of a tricky map to get used to. Anyway, start of the game. So we have Crazy135 going Klugabot Factory in the northwest side of the map, while DDeebs is morphing and then going hovercraft factory which is not as odd as it looks on this map actually it's still a little bit odd but it's not as odd as it looks you can actually make hovercraft work at least in 2v2 we've seen that happen starting out with a scrubber into a couple quills so he's going for more of a defensive opening while crazy 135 went straight for a conjurer into glaive so he is both players are going for a very defensive opening, which is a little strange in this map. This map is fairly small. It does support a raid opening right off, but no, they went for a defensive opening. Anyway, Crazy135 is running in. He is attacking pretty quickly with about three glaives, while DDeebs was going out with a scalpel. Going over here. There it is. That's being sent over to Crazy's base, while Crazy135 sending... First Glaive is getting in, and his commander has been morphed, does have a light particle beam, it does see it coming in. Sees all the Glaives, actually he does have radar, so he's able to spot everything coming in. And he also gets into Crazy135's One Three Five's base, his scalpel not likely to deal a whole lot of damage though. Unfortunately, did not go behind the Solar Collector, went in front of it, got trapped on it, and did not go around. This is on v engine version 91 by the way, so the vehicle pathing isn't as good as it could be. A little unfortunate, but yeah, that happens sometimes. Anyway, DDeebs does have slightly disadvantageous position. He has less energy. He has actually no energy other than his commander from the looks of it. Yeah, that's about it. He has no other power plants. Getting a solar plant now, but right now he's only been relying on reclaim. Well, Crazy135 getting solar collectors and everyone is metal extractors and also getting... I think Reclaim. No, he's not getting Reclaim. Never mind. He is just pushing out. Surprisingly not getting Reclaim, actually. He has enough Conjurers to do it. And he probably should. There's a lot of tree Reclaim on this map. A lot of energy on this map that you can just get for without having to actually build power generators for that purpose. Also, given the height in this map, it's not a bad idea to build wind generators along the side here. Unless your opponent is going gunships, which DDeebs, or neither DDeebs nor Crazy135 is doing it. Although that mostly works for the South player. The North player... Actually, the North player is an e even easier time. They have this area here. The South player does have this hill as well. So both players do have a bit of a protected hill they can work with. But I don't see either player going for wind. Which isn't terribly surprising. Gra Crazy is getting some reclaim in though. So at least he is getting that taken advantage of. And now DD is coming in with three scalpels along the north side of the map. Four will be... A fourth will be following up to meet with them at the first three going through and will be meeting a bit of resistance with this Lotus. However, not a whole lot. There's a Glaive as well, but that will go down. However, that does cause them to be on reload when they encounter the Lotus. Another Glaive coming in to help defend. It will not help. This Conjurer is going to die this Metal Extractor soon after. Yep, down it goes. So Glaive is trying to come back to defend. Crazy135 does have a few Glaives forward on the west side of the map. Looks like he's standing up for an attack, but that is not going to be that useful. The Lotus Wover is going to be fairly useful. And the Scalpels are not going for it. In fact, they're just going straight past it, which is... That was actually a good idea. Going straight past it was a better option. Honestly, you're not going to win like that. You're not going to win against the Lotus if you go back to it. Granted, Crazy's Commander was there, but it didn't have anything other than the basic pea shooter. And thus wasn't much of a threat. And there really wasn't any other defense inside the base. Crazy135 has not built any defenders or Lotuses inside of his base. So after penetrating that one Lotus at the outside... DDeebs would have had free reign. DDeebs, on the other hand, does have a Lotus right inside his base, so he is a bit better equipped for dealing with this. Not by much, but he is still better equipped, so it's something. And he is 
actually getting ahead in power as well. Behind in metal, but ahead in power. Crazy135 is expanding much more aggressively. Taking the entire northwest side of the map while DDeves is barely expanding at all. And what it's expanding to is the very low value expansions in between bases. Granted, so is Crazy135, but DDeves hasn't captured this particular metal extractor, which would help him quite a lot. It'd be three metal. That's more valuable than the two metal extractors he has built. And going for some harassment on a relatively low value metal extractor is not going to be all that valuable to lose. The one in front of it, still low value, but this one over here, this is the one that's going to be really key. However, Lotus is in front of it. Looks like these scrawl these scalpels will be able to get through. Oh, sorry, scrubbers will be able to get through. Actually, they were named daggers recently, but this is an older version of the game, so yeah. They are now scrubbers. Not scalpels. Scalpels are another unit, which I'm very glad they renamed scrubbers to daggers because that makes it a lot easier to stop being confused, but these are currently in this version of the game called scrubbers. Anyway, getting into the base and now taking free reign. Deedeebs doing the right thing and dealing quite a lot of damage to Crazy135's base. Getting rid of at least, well, he's getting rid of Conjurer, at least one metal extractor. Getting rid of a caretaker as well. That's probably the biggest thing you could do, although Crazy135 doesn't have anything but reclaim at the moment. And losing yet another interior metal extractor. Those are all two and a half metal each. So that's a big loss to lose that. Unfortunately, DD is not focusing on the Metal Extractor to finish this. He is losing all the scrubbers, but that was a nice raid. Got rid of, well, three useful Metal Extractors and two others. As well as the Caretaker. The Caretaker is probably the biggest one, although Crazy135 is rebuilding it, but still, that's a lot of time to the next time he can actually push 20 metal into his factory without having to use his... Well, okay, he could have obviously used his commander. Having said, DDeves is pushing forward with some defender lines. Trying to set that up, which on this map is fairly powerful. I'm not going to lie, that is a useful thing to do. Rather difficult to get through, but there are ways. I mean, these hills here, they kind of block line of sight, and DDeves isn't that far forward, so these defenders aren't going to actually be able to do too much to units that are close enough for them to hit. Like this warrior, for instance. This warrior is actually in range of this defender. But the hill blocks it. So that defender can't actually hit that, so it's f too far away to be useful, unfortunately. Anyway, DD is continuing to push out more scrubbers, has switched over to scalpels, so I will have to avoid being confused between the two. And now getting a caretaker, which is a little bit late, but thankfully for him, he has been building up outside of that. Finally getting this more valuable metal extractor, and quite ahead economically. So DD has taken the lead at this point, Crazy135 does have a fairly well defended base, he has learned his lesson somewhat, building Lotuses inside of his base. Not quite in the interior completely, but still further in. Trying to move forward, and the defenders, while getting heavily damaged, they're... No, actually, because they're getting heavily damaged, because of their poor position, they aren't actually able to do all that much. They still... They still are able to stop this warrior, however. But not before half of their number are lost. The positioning of the defenders was not ideal. At all. Though admittedly... No, actually, yeah, given the way the Lotuses are positioned right now, the defenders could very easily be positioned right on this part of the hill, and other than Rocco's, which are always a threat, they could actually deal with a lot of stuff. In fact, with the Rocco's, it's symmetric, and the range is very similar. Rocco's have a range of 460, while defenders have a range of... Oh, 610, never mind, the defenders win by far. I'm thinking Lotuses. Lotuses have a range of 460. Lotuses equal Rocco's, but defenders greatly outrange them. However, the Rockers are coming in, and they are going to be quite a threat to DD's commander. There aren't enough of them to really matter yet, though. There are more of them being constructed, but yeah, not a lot of them up yet. DD's commander does have light particle. It is a lower range. However, getting flanked on all sides, nicely done crazy, 135, flanking the defenders on all sides, taking them all out, and breaking DD's position on the hill. Counterattack from DD's going in with the scalpels along, sorry, the scrubbers along the south side. The scalpels are still inside the base. The scrubbers along the southwest side, sorry, northwest side. And getting pushed up by a couple glaives and the Rockos on the hill. Those Rockos have taken a hill in force. Deedeebs has to retreat his commander. He is able to successfully do so, but still, that's a position he would probably have rather not lost. And now Crazy135 taking the useful expansions. He's taking the useless expansions in between, but now taking the more useful ones. This will tip the tide, most likely. In fact, DD is about to lose his commander. The Rockos should be able to swarm it out. Yep, they will be able to kill it. Down it goes. DD loses his commander. And given that he morphed at the start of the game, he was definitely putting some value on that. However, the Scrubbers are going to be able to come in and actually going to get caught out. The Rockos are able to get them off on this ramp. The Rockos getting caught in the... Sorry, the Scrubbers getting caught in the wreckage of each other. The Rockos 
now just finally having to deal with them, but managing to, well, reduce their number and damage them quite a lot. Not managing to take out the number, unfortunately. Not managing to actually kill any of them, but still heavily damaging them. Getting a few of them down to one health, actually. And a few more Rockos are in back. Looks like about half a dozen Rockos with a couple Glaives on top of that for support. And Deedeebs has retaken the hill. Losing his commander in the process, but retaking the hill, but losing a lot of his economy. That being said, I'm not sure if Deedeebs is aware of what's going on here. Deedeebs does have a Static Raider. He has Static Raider, he's not aware of this area here. He's aware of what's in the main base, for the most part, but not aware of what Crazy135 is up to. And Crazy135, on the other hand, has no radar, pure line of sight, moving some glaives in to actually scout out. Aware of most of what Deedeebs has, however. Not a lot of surprises from Deedeebs right now. But, center of the map, we do have more Rockos coming in. The Scrubbers are still being... They're actually holding decently well, but moving off the hill for some reason. A little bit of an odd choice. They are basically conceding the hill to the Rockos. Unless he was planning on going around the south side and forcing the Rockos to... walk slowly down this hill. Okay, really, that's not much of a block for Rockos. The Rockos can bath anywhere. This is one of the reasons why Hovercraft is a bit of an odd choice. It's not unworkable, it's just a little bit odd. Anyway, Scrubber's back on the top of the hill. The Rockos are still pushing them back. However, Scalpels, if they get up, that is going to turn the tides, push the Rockos fully back, and give Deedeebs a clear path to victory, I think. Now, unfortunately, he does not know about this northeast expansion, and he has not bothered to check. Though his Scalpels are, unfortunately, getting caught a bit on the hill, but he hasn't actually bothered to look at the northeast. Nor has he really bothered to take the southwest. I don't think he's checked the value of the metal extractors. Given that, yeah, he is trying to overdrive these one shot, or these one metal, or actually 0.7 metal metal extractors. That isn't worth doing. So yeah, Crazy135 is taking all the good metal spots, as well as some of the bad ones. While DDeebs isn't even contesting the good ones. Which is rather unfortunate for him, but it is... Actually a little unfortunate that the map design did not make this clear. I mean, it's not especially clear, I mean, it's kind of clear if you look at the textures, but... Not especially, and most of the arcade maps do have a standard of two metal per spot. So, having exceptional metal amounts is a little unusual. You have to use the F4 view to see it, and it's just odd work. Anyway, DDeebs is doing a nice harassment along the southwest side. Still behind economically, though. He needs to attack the northeast side. That is the important thing, and he is going for that with several scalpels. Actually, all of the scalpels... Okay, never mind. He has split half the scalpels. I was to say, he shouldn't put all the scalpels over there. He needs to have half them go over to the west side, half them go over to the east side. Losing the hill, however, he has conceded the hill, and going heavy for scalpels, will be able to actually tear this apart, though. The west side is pretty much his, though he has to actually move forward with it. These scalpels will do just fine, just go forward. You are losing ground by being... by not being bold here. However, the main base, unfortunately, is getting heavily attacked, and that is a big problem. Not a lot of units to actually deal with this. No maces in place to deal with the glaze. The scalpels will be able to deal with the Rockos okay. They will win, but yeah, the maces maces would be a very good idea right now just to get rid of these slaves, just to help out there. However, the scalpels are going to be able to come through and tear this apart while the west side scalpel is coming from Deedeebs, so he is able to deal with most of what's being built here. Scalpel range is 450, 10 less than a Rocco and a Lotus. But the ones on the east side have been able to break through. They are getting rid of all the metal extractors over here. Crazy135 losing all of his metal extractors. All the good metal extractors have gone down. He still has the low value ones, but that's just four metal between them. Actually, less than four metals, about three metal between them. It's 0.7 each. Yeah, that's three metal between them. Maybe. It might even be as low as 2.5. Or even two. And, yeah, the west side has been taken out by DDEVs. The east side as well. Crazy135 going for a center cut. And this is actually a pretty powerful attack. Though, with the scrubbers in play, the... The Glaze got a much harder time getting through and dealing the damage they need to deal. Maces are the answer, but Scrubbers will do in a pinch. And Scalpels coming in along the north side, breaking it pretty heavily. Unfortunately, the Scalpels over here are not being controlled. DDeebs is not paying attention to these guys. One of them was at a good range to deal with this, but does go down. Unfortunately, it was actually behind the Scalpel. It's the wreckage of its comrade in arms. And it goes down. And DDeebs in his main base, taking a decent amount of damage, but... Really, the main problem is this Rocco here, which is about to die to a Scalpel. And to a Lotus. Down it goes, so Crazy135's break-in has failed. Now, DDeebs pretty much on the path to victory here. Just needs to pay close attention to these Scalpels, make sure not to lose them. Go around the low, the minimally defended sides. Like, straight to the north, 
This Lotus here is very heavily defended, though. The Scalpel should be able to one-shot it all together. Down it goes. Another one will go down soon after the Scalpels need to retreat. Get the weak ones out of the way. No, unfortunately. Unfortunately, vehicle pathing of Engine 91 not working out too well. Yeah, DDs just needs to... He needs to barge in. This... If he barges in from this angle, going to the north, taking care of this Lotus, and then going from there to the rest of the base, he will outright win. But if he attacks from the southern angle, he will not win. He won't win at this stage in the game if he wins at all. But yeah, from the north side, that's basically... That is weak, but I think he's going to attack the south side. Yes, he is attacking to the south side, and that Lotus is going to stop him. That's going to stop him. Cole losing two scalpels for free. That was complete waste. Three for free, and the last one gets trapped inside the wreckage. Barely gets out, but that really was not the way to go. DD was needed to have gone over to the north side. He knew there was only one Lotus and one Metal Extractor. He knew that from before. We saw bef from before he had... Yeah, he knows that Lotus exists, and that's all there is. He also knows the existence of these Lotuses. So there was really not much of an excuse, unfortunately. No reason for that to happen. There are more scalpels and scrubbers being built, and DDs has a massive economic advantage. Unfortunately, a lot of that being from Reclaim, which is going into his reserves. He is wasting that Reclaim. He needs to be pushing all that into the factory. Just push all the metal he has into the factory. You, he's not paying attention to the caretakers. He is not paying attention to his economy where he needs to, because his economic advantage, primarily from Reclaim, is actually being kind of contested by Crazy135. And actually, Crazy135 making better use of this, not wasting the metal. Still, DDs will have at least 500 metal that can be pushed in to one and a half times as fast as Crazy135. So he's got something, but still, it's a little bit difficult to work with. That being said, enough scrubbers coming in should, should be able to get rid of these Lotuses. However, with Warrior support, it may not be the case. Nope, one of the Lotuses is not about to go down. In fact, they're going past it once again. Looks like he's going straight for the Commander, getting a Caretaker destroyed. That is good, and unfortunately, not really doing much more damage. He will be able to... No, he's... He is being indecisive. DDs, you need to be decisive. Very important part of the game. It, decisiveness is key. If he goes to the factory, that actually will be very big. He needs to make sure he's away from the factory when it explodes, so he's going to lose all these scrubbers when that factory goes down, which is very soon. Assuming that factory does, in fact, go down and the scrubbers don't die to the commander, which they very likely will. In fact, they are going to die to the commander. They're getting distracted. Well, not distracted, but they are getting killed too quickly, and... Unfortunately, you're crazy. One thirty-five is not gonna—he's gonna save his factory. He just barely saves it. One more shot would have killed that factory. He just barely saved it. Unfortunately, the indecisiveness that caused one of the scalpels, sorry scrubbers to be lost to a lotus. That scrubber would have saved the factory. Would have killed the factory. Sorry, that would have won D Deeb's the game. This is the second time that D Deeb's has lost the game. Partly because he didn't use the north well enough, and partly because he was indecisive about what he should do. And Crazy135 just reinforcing the south constantly. Not the north, though, so once again, DDBs does have the north as a viable option. It looks like he may, in fact, take it. Yeah, the way he's going, he's going to be taking the north option. He's going to be going right past that Lotus, but there's enough scrubbers that he should be able to kill it. Yes, he will be able to do so. Assuming not enough units distracted, but yeah, there aren't enough units distracted. That Lotus does go down. The north side is completely open, and these scrubbers, unfortunately, find the factory has been fully repaired, but move to take out the commander instead from the looks of it. Good luck with that. They are going to die in the process. Most of the scrubbers go down. But that commander has gone down, evening out the commander count, at least. Still, this Klogobot factory is nowhere near destroyed. And the Metal Extractors, however, are. And Crazy135 getting quite a... He's getting very behind economically. He has no real military. Deeds can just push in and win at this stage. But I don't know if he's going to do so. He is going to go through the center, surprisingly enough. He just go kill the factory! It's... Seriously, he could kill the factory this point. As long as he goes from the north and doesn't attack through these lotuses, he could kill the factory right off. Why is he going through the center where he has... He cannot path easily. That must have been just an attack move order to... Or the move order to the north directly. No, you cannot easily path through here. That's one of the hard parts of using vehicles or hovercraft on this map. Is they cannot path effectively up this hill. Not without some terraforming. That really doesn't work out, I'm afraid. Anyway, it's going to be a bit of a slow section, so I'm just going to fast forward through it because there's not much going on. Even though DDBs could win the game at this stage. <sighs> I mean, seriously, this is. This is kind of sad to watch. Like, DDBs, you could have won 10 minutes ago and 5 minutes ago. And you could win right now. And actually, he's going for another attack, but he's going for a very light attack, which is going to hit a bunch of Lotuses and not do anything. Ay. <sighs> so, speed up again. He is. Yeah, once again, being very indecisive. 
And finally, sending up his scalpels over the north. Crazy 135 not really changing too much of a strategy. He's not actually rebuilding a whole lot. Oh, attack to the north. And this is going well for DDs. Like I said, he has already won this game. He just has to solidify. He just has to attack. Solidly attack. He's killed the commander. He can kill the Klogobot factory right off, pretty much. There are no backup factories. And there's not a whole lot of... I mean, there's some backup economy. The metal tractors were largely rebuilt. But beyond that, not much. Mind you, DDs does have to fight against the fact that Crazy 135 does have a decent amount of overdrive. But mostly, it's just that he is not getting killed, and he has a lot of reclaim to work with. The hovercrafts, the scrubbers were throwing themselves away, and this is enough scrubbers. To, this is by far 40 scrubbers. That should do it. I mean, like I said, it already could have. Scrubber, scalpel, mace combined would actually be a better option, though. Just to deal with the warriors, and get scalpels to deal with the warriors, get scrubbers to deal with pretty much everything else, and get maces to deal with glaives a bit more effectively than the scrubbers will. That would win the game, but... No, unfortunately, that is not what is happening, and once again, we move into speedy.wars, because not much is happening, I'm afraid. Yep, more units being built up, and once again, DD just tries to move painfully through the center. Is able to do it because of a lack of resistance, but I don't know why he is trying to take the hill with units that can barely get up the ramp. At any rate, DDs is... Ah, there we go, getting more scalpels. He is attacking the west side, however... Crazy 135 has had enough time to build up defenses. That's the thing. Like, Deeves could have easily won at this point. He could actually go to the center right now. If he, if he goes to the center right now, through the north, he will have the game. But he's not doing so. I don't know why. Does he have... He has radar, but not coverage over there. He just send one of these guys. One scrubber north, and that would do it. That would give him enough information to know what he should do, when he should attack, that he should attack to the north, but he can't. Or is he won't... But he doesn't matter. He is going all for it. That is what he should be doing. That's what he should have done a while ago. Right behind a lot of crazy lines. Unfortunately, no! Going to the south where all the Lotuses are! That is the... That is the absolute wrong... Actually, never mind. That's not a bad route given the Stardust. Stardust is in the north, so that wasn't actually as bad a route as it looked at first. But still, the Stardust to the south as well. Unfortunately, he's going straight for the defenses. No, don't bother going to the defenses. Go for the defenses only as far as you need to to get to the important stuff. The factories, the workers, the metal extractors. In opposite order. Because that's what you need to kill in order to win. And the factory it looks like it might be going down if if he could just focus fire on the factory, which he finally is, and the scrubbers don't have any real resistance. The warrior is coming in to try to deal with them, but there's enough wreckage to get in the way, and that factory is it It's about to go down. Why is he not like, killing it? Ah, uh, this is the second time. Second time that DD has let that die. And a lot of it's just due to the fact that he's let Crazy135 build up. Actually, moving where he did, that stardust got in the way and finished off a lot of his scrubbers. Could have probably killed the warrior with the scrubbers he had. But like I said, scrubber scalpel mace. He is getting scalpel mace, which is good. And getting scrubbers as well. So finally getting the proper unit combination. But unfortunately, his scrubbers are taking a lot... Sorry, scalpel's taking a lot of damage from these stardust. At this stage, penetrators wouldn't be a bad idea. Although admittedly, DDs doesn't have the economy to support that. But still, if he did, if he actually had taken this expansion over here, then penetrators would be a valid option. But I don't know. I mean... We'll see if he goes to that. The Stardust is going to go down. And with that, that's the main defense that Crazy135 has. Everything else will be taken. Oh, no. Never mind. Another Stardust. And there's a further Stardust up here. Yeah, the Stardusts are the big issue right now. Mace is doing a pretty good, pretty good job tanking. But unfortunately, Scalpel's getting stuck on wreckage. And now that the Stardust is down, DDBs needs to expand over to the southwest. If he expands to the southwest, he has the economy of basically 7.5 metal added to his current economy. And that's exactly what he needs to support all these caretakers, which he isn't doing. Not fully. Not right now. And moving more scalpels in, but a lot of his scalpels and maces died in the process of that attack. And I'm really surprised that he is not putting infinite Q on scalpel, mace, and scrubber all together. It's just weird. I don't know what it is, he's, why he's doing that, but no, he needs to do that. And losing yet another scalpel to a bunch of glaives, because Crazy135 is switching between unit types. He's actually getting, well, a good mix. A Warrior, Glaive, Rocco mix. DDeebs, on the other hand, is going pure scalpel until he builds the occasional scrubber or, sorry, pure scrubber until he builds the occasional scalpel or mace. And, no, that's not what you do. That's not what you need to do. However, these scrubbers will be able to get rid of the Roccos. The Glaives will be a bit of a problem, but not much. The Roccos will go down soon after, and we'll be kind of back where we were, honestly. Not a whole lot has changed. Crazy135 has been behind economically, but has been much more clever when it comes to his unit choices. He's been much more clever on how he spends his money. 
and has been turning a lot of DD's forces, at least two large armies, at least 150 probably scrubbers, into wreckage fields. That is a lot that has been lost there. And Dedeves, unfortunately, is not building the unit composition he needs. Like I said, now he's getting some scrubbers, but these are probably just alt-in scrubbers. Sorry, scalpels. They are... Yeah, they're alt-in scrubbers. They're scalpels. Gah! This is why I like that they're called daggers now, because scrubber and scalpel and just... Duh! Stupid S starting names. I don't know what is with S. Letter S. For something, some reason, that particular letter just messes me up, and I can't seem to do anything about it. Anyway, DD was dagging in the northeast as well. The southwest being pretty heavily defended. The northeast is a good angle. The scrubbers will be able to get through and deal with it. Scalpels coming in behind, but like I said, these are just three scalpels coming in. DDBs needs to infinite build between the different types of units. That is... Well, that is something that has really slowed DDBs down. It hasn't cost them the game or anything. I mean, it would cost them the game in a lot of situations, but in this particular case, it hasn't yet, but it has been slowing them down. And in fact, it has been giving Crazy135 a much bigger advantage than he really deserves. Honestly, D Deebs should have won about 20 minutes ago. And the fact that he hasn't really comes down to unit composition. And the fact that he didn't get this con. The lack of metal extractors here doesn't help, but yeah, it's just poor unit composition. He's been focusing so heavily on scalpels. He's been trying to stay in the rating stages well past the time the rating stages has been over. Like, we're well into consolidation. We're well into trying to just break your opponent's defenses and getting to the end. It's just. Yeah, I don't know. This is getting kind of painful, honestly. This is kind of why I don't like watching games with... Well, okay. I, I know it's actually a long game because the time is given in the replay. I don't remember who wins. Unfortunately, that is also spoiled, but I tend to forget who wins. Anyway, the thing is is that long games with lower skill players have a tendency to have this because, like I said, d has won this game already. It's his game to lose, and it has been for the last 20 minutes. He just needs to just... He needs to attack with a proper unit composition. The Halberd... Nah... I'd use a Mace, personally, in this case. The Halberd isn't terrible for tanking shots. I mean, it's, that's what it does. But, honestly, at this situation with all the Glaze running around, the fact that Crazy135 keeps throwing out Glaze with everything else, I'd go for Maces just to deal with that. The Halberd's doing an okay job, but they have to attack in order to do that, and you just want them to be tanking. Not attacking, just tanking. Yeah, Deebs is trying to go in and, well, he's not really trying to go in and win. That's the thing. He's not going, pushing through. He is building defenses and being really timid. Finally, looks like he's trying to take this area over to the southwest, but otherwise he's just been way too timid. I don't get that. I really, really don't. He's got to, he's got to just go for it with the proper unit mix. That's all he's had wrong. He's getting some halberds. That's Okay, I guess with enough halberds, it will tank. As long as they're in front. They have to actually be positioned in front, but... Just... Just let it... I don't know, this is getting... Taking forever. Okay, finally... Okay, there we go. He's setting in one scrubber to actually scout out to see what's going on. That's what he needed to have done a while ago. Like I said, 20 minutes ago, I mentioned that earlier, and he's actually doing that properly. Now, that's good to see. Learning within the game, but still... Should have done that before. And... Still didn't really have the proper unit mix being built. Now it's just spamming halberds. You don't need to spam one of each unit type. That's what infinite build is really great for, is getting your unit composition in your queue. Just making that part of your queue. However, he has harassed out DD's, sorry, Crazy 135's economy here. But still losing more scrubbers, because scalpels do tend to friendly fire. And it's a bit of a dangerous thing you have to worry about with them. They have a nasty tendency to, friend, to hit their allies. And the halberds are not being used. Why are the halberds not being used? The whole point is for them to tank everything else. Just go up front, tank shots for everything else, but no, that's not helping. And now, once again, back to scrubbers. As DD tries to take the west side as well, but not really taking the metal extractors. I don't know why he's not taking those metal extractors. He must never use F4 view. Uh, ever. Because otherwise he would know that those metal extractors are the ones you absolutely want to have. You absolutely need those metal extractors. Everything else is irrelevant. These halberds moving in, but with no support. He really... I guess he's going for the factory directly. He just wants to hit that, but... 
These halberds have zero support, and there's defenses everywhere. The only safe spot is this one pocket down here. He is, however, going to get rid of the factory. Finally going to get rid of this factory, and that should pretty solidly push the game into DU's favor, if it hasn't already. At the very least, he's going to be able to just run through here, I guess. Not really do much damage, but he got rid of the factory. Took him three tries, he managed to do it. But still, he could be a lot more aggressive than he is. And also, just a matter of unit composition. Unit composition has been his big weakness. However, Crazy135 going for an Athena, of all things, going for an Athena to revive pretty much everything in the center of the map. Already taken one scrubber. Not sure if DDoS expects this. He will be able to stop it once he spots it, though. The scrubbers, no, he's not going to the north. Never mind. So the Athena is pretty much impervious right now, and Crazy135 still has a backup plan. Well, that happens. Yeah, people build Athena sometimes. Rarely, but sometimes. Still, a second factory would be a better idea. DD actually has a lot of metal coming in. He, has, he is also reclaiming into excess. That is a very bad idea. Do not reclaim into excess. If you have excess metal, do not reclaim. Build something. Use the caretaker to build something. Build a backup factory. Not necessarily here. Build it somewhere else. Build it within all these defensive structures so it's harder to attack. Not doing that, though. No, he's, he's just wasting all about... 300-ish metal of reclaim. Oh, never mind. No, he's... I'm not saying. He's... Wait. What the... Okay, is he... I think he's resing while he's reclaiming? Yeah, he is resurrecting as he's reclaiming. I don't... Or, I guess that was odd? Yeah, he was... Okay, whatever. He is resurrecting his factory. That's not the best thing to do. Honestly, it'd be faster, though we can't really, there's no ETA for res, but it would be faster just to build a new one. It would, it would take less than a minute because he has a caretaker right here. He has a bunch of workers. He has enough economy to push it. Just build a new factory. Don't bother resing. But it doesn't matter. DD is likely to be able to go in just to win from here if he attacks, and it looks like he soon will. He is going for an attack. Bit of a raid. Not actually going for a strong attack. There is a Stardust in the way, but... He can probably push through that with the units he has. In fact, he will be able to destroy it pretty handily with these scalpels. Losing no scalpels in the process, but taking a lot of damage. There's another one in the way along the north side and along the south side. There's two in the way. At this point, DDoS would probably just change entirely. It changed to missile silo, for crying out loud. Might as well. Especially now that he's actually gotten these valuable metal expansions and probably take the metal spots over to the northeast pretty easily, too. And this metal spot. Needs to take that. Everything else, take or leave, but... He has enough map control that he can take what he needs to build a missile solid to just get rid of these Stardusts. Or, I mean, build enough units. Or Penetrator. Honestly, Penetrator would work as well. And DDeeb's not really going heavily for anything. Crazy135 is now getting Stardust in the center. Probably going to go for another cut. Doubt this is going to work very well, but honestly, it doesn't much matter. I mean, DDeeb's has won the game. He's won the game for quite some time. He just can't easily push through because of the defenses. He has nothing to really deal with them. Not getting Penetrator. Getting... Well, it would say decent mix, except it's not on infinite Q, so not really, no. The... Oh, never mind. This is infinite Q. Scalpels, maces, finally going for Unimix. And the Scalpels and maces should be able to push through decently well. But not especially... But not well enough, and Cloakabot Factory has been resurrected in time, with size coming in as well. Like, just... Just attack. A Gauss turret is in place, but that will go down. It is attacking, so his armor's gone. Only armored one's not attacking. And DD's halberds are being used against him. However, not especially well. They are not staying in armor mode. And they will go down pretty... Oh, no, they won't. That one actually... Oh, opens this gun right at the bad time. Still, DD's has pretty much total map control. He could get... He get a penetrator right now, push it out within... Well, okay, it would take a little while. It would take about two minutes or so, but... Okay, I guess it's too much. Fine. Actually, no, it would take a minute. Take 50 seconds. He has 22 metal being pushed in. It would take 40 to 50 seconds. A penetrator is completely viable at this point. He is, however, getting enough scalpels and halberds. Sorry, scalpels and maces, not halberds, to be able to push through. Halberds are over here. Being rezzed, with size coming in as well. And one of the sides does go down to a scalpel, but getting spotted out and getting killed as a result. Because Crazy135 has no energy, therefore he cannot cloak, so these sides are basically useless. As they cannot cloak without power, and there isn't enough power to make them cloak. 
That kind of sucks. But yeah, the res uses up quite a lot of energy. About 4.5 per Athena, and that, of course, means no power! Even with 21 energy and 9 metal, it's only 10 in production costs. Not enough power for cloaking. Or just, maybe, maybe just barely. No, not even. Scythe's about to go down. The Halberd's about to go down. Even with this armor goes down, thanks to all these scalp- How many? There are 24 scalpels. Two dozen scalpels coming in with three maces. We'll be able to get rid of the scythe and the other scythe pretty soon. And everything else. They'll just be able to plow through. Deeves is finally going to win this game. Which he should have won in a quarter of the time. It was that close. Unfortunately, he did not. So yeah, unit composition and decisiveness. Two very important parts of 0k that must be learned in order to be successful. And also good scouting, but that helps with the decisiveness. Yeah, I'm gonna, I guess, be done with this pretty soon, and we will have, after this, a 2v2. I guess I'm going to do those, because there's a tournament that's coming up next week. Next Saturday, actually. Going more details in the next cast, but yeah, next Saturday is the 2v2 tournament. So sign up for that if you want to play. Because everyone's welcome, really. So sign up. It's 2v2. It's not just going to be Golda versus Randy as final match, although that's actually never happened in the 1v1 tournament yet. Neither player's been in the tournament at the same time. But yeah, 2v2 is going to be bit more flexible. There's more room if you are a bit nervous about your skill. There's more room to succeed because you have a teammate. Anyway, DDs looks like he's not moving in just because he is having a hard time getting through the wreckage, but he is finally going to be able to move in, finally be able to get rid of everything, including, actually I think he already got rid of the Athenas. I don't think they've moved away. Nope, they are dead. The Athenas are dead somewhere around here. Honestly, it doesn't matter that much. The scalpels would have killed them. And it looks like now, finally, D Oh, DD says GG. No, no, no. Crazy135 is the one who should say, who should say GG, because he is the one who has lost. DD finally wins the game, and yeah, I don't know where the Athenas went even. They just sort of died. Honestly, who cares? <laughs> okay, I kind of care, but yeah, they're, they're dead. Or actually, no, one of them is... No, never mind, what am I saying? They're not dead at all. They are very much alive. Center of the map, making Panthers. Wow, Crazy135 is not going quietly. And, although there are some air units in play just to deal with these if necessary, but yeah. DD still has to do this, and the center map is rather difficult to deal with for him. He does have an air units. With the Air Force, he will be able to actually deal with these pretty effectively. And this one Panther won't be a problem. And Crazy135 has no resources left. This Panther will never be completed due to lack of resources. A pretty near lack of resources. There are, is one metal extractor at 0.6 metal. That's about it. And in come the bombers. Raven doing something and the Phoenix is doing nothing at all, as usual. Yeah, there's really nothing crazy 135 can do here. He actually did manage to complete the Panther, however, so that means it's going to have to die shortly to all of these scalpels. I don't think he's going to get a sh No, it's not even going to get a shot off. It just dies. These Athenas actually getting hit from the... They're getting hit from the vulnerable side. That is going to be... That's going to be game. That's it. And there we go. Crazy135 throws in the towel. The Athenas finally die at the end of the game. And that is that game. Hi. I realize a lot of people actually left while I was casting that. Yeah, I know. I understand. I, mean, I don't want to insult DDs. He did request this. I didn't want to at least help him out. Bit, bit of a tutorial match. Maybe not the best thing for a Saturday. Anyway, the next game is going to be... Also between some of the lower skill players, or mid mid skill players, not lower skill, like 1600 LO. So not terrible. Anyway, One Cut Never versus N42K and Dein Freund, and that is going to be on Vitra. Or Dein Freund. Freund. I never learned German in school, so I'm unfortunately not always correct with the pronunciations. I apologize, as I have many times. Actually, he's also Swiss. Anyway, I'm going to be back in just a moment, so stay tuned.